So living in, you know, a quote unquote Navy town, there's a ton of vernacular that no one ever understands if you are a, a civilian. Here we are today with Paul Robinson, the executive director of RISE, and someone could probably come up with a ton of different acronyms for what RISE is. Uh, it, did you come? Is, is there one in there? I don't even know that answer. Is there? There isn't. No, that was my first executive decision. No acronyms, even though <laughs> everyone thinks it's an acronym because the first letter is R, and we're all about resilience. So no acronym. No. Oh man, what a disappointment! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's the first question. There you go. So, oh, I, I, I got nothing else. We're done. Show's <laughs> over. <laughs> 50 seconds. It's a new record. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Paul. Sure. Well, th thank you for the invitation. Glad to do it. Did you come yeah. up with the name then at all? Did someone else come up yeah. with how, how yeah. the whole thing it? Yeah. Well, so um, the, the, the story behind this, uh, the, the, this whole process was um, Rise was born out of a grant. Well, even before that. So Hurricane Sandy, as everyone knows, was a major hurricane event that. Um, that left in its pathway a lot of damage to a lot of major um, uh, metropolitan centers. And after that, the, uh, uh, the government uh, through HUD put up a large amount of money. It was a, I think it was about a billion dollars as part of a competition, the so-called NDRC, National Disaster Resilience Competition, for states to propose uh, areas that they wanted to protect, that needed protection, uh, a resilience type protection, protection from flooding, from the rain, from the uh, uh, from uh, the, the ocean, from rivers, that sort of thing. And um, uh, long story short, the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia uh, won the f third largest grant behind New York and uh, New Orleans of $120 million. And it was the only project that was fully funded. The others were um, funding to go to other projects. In that, uh, proposal, it was also unusual in that uh, what was also proposed was this idea of instead of spending $120 million on traditional resilience infrastructure like pumps and pipes and berms and that sort of thing, uh, there was some, some money, $5 million was put aside for something that they called the Coastal Resilience Laboratory and Accelerator Center, which became RISE. And the idea behind it was to um, uh, develop some new ideas. Instead of the, the traditional resilience infrastructure is, is expensive and takes a long time to put in. Maybe there are, there are things that can be done quicker, maybe things that can be done more effectively, um, maybe uh, cheaper, you name it. But if this was a way to, to use our local area's threats in terms of the flooding environment of the coastal community and come up with some new ideas, some new innovations, diversify the economy, grow some small businesses. And so um, as I started up Rise in 2017, uh, we had to uh, figure out how we were going to do that. And one of the first things was uh, to get to the answer to this question was, uh, what are we going to call it? Didn't want another acronym didn't want to call it the Center for Resilience and the Laboratory Acceleration Center or whatever that was. So it became RISE. Got it. And that was, so that was 2017. 2018 yeah. is when you kicked everything off. What, uh, so talk to us about the, the types of businesses that you're, you know, that you're looking for. How many businesses are you working with at any given time and what that process looks like? So, um, I'll, I'll sort of circle around this to give a little bit of background of, of, of how we um, how we developed our process. So, uh, my I, I'm an aerospace engineer by background, and uh, my prior company uh, commercialized some technologies for the aviation sector in, in the in, in aviation safety. So I came I came out in, uh, in, in the, the mid 2010s, 2015 thereabouts. Um, with some experience of uh, commercializing technology, how to develop that technology and how to sell it and uh, who your customers were, all that sort of thing and uh, to a, a successful conclusion. So I come to that with understanding what a small business needs in when they are developing new ideas and new technologies and what their 
uh, what what the really rough spots are and where they need help and uh, um, the best way to or the, the best way to get through what is often called the chasm, which is where you've got a good idea, you've done a little bit of research, but you have to get to the next paying customer. So I, I came to the the whole process with that kind of a background. Um, so we had to figure out using uh, government money, how do you build something that helps companies grow, um, uh, demonstrate their capabilities, demonstrate their solution and go on to uh, other uh, and, and larger markets. And we, we came upon, we, we teamed up with an organization out of MIT called Solve and they, they were building a challenge program. And the idea of a challenge is um, that you don't propose solutions, you propose the problems. And one of the things that uh, our region is very good at, the cities are really good at, they know what their problems are. They know where the flooding is. They kind of know why it floods for the most part. They know what some of the other problems are in terms of uh, um, uh, affecting utilities and buildings and people and that sort of thing. But they don't know what the, uh, what the solutions are. So through the challenge process, uh, we built up the program that we could source the, um, the problems that our local community had, along with some pretty significant data to back it up that we could post out there and say, look, these are the problems. We want you to solve them. Tell us how you're going to solve them, as well as tell us what your business model is and what your business plan is. Because we need to know if we're going to give you money, this money has to, it, it's not an R&D project where you just do it and, and move on. We want to know um, how you're going to grow the business. And, and so we built that. It, so it's, it's sourcing the problem. It, it, I mean, it's identifying the problem. It's sourcing it out to the community, getting their submissions. And then we go, once we get that, we select them. And then we go on to another few steps in the process. And they don't necessarily need to be Virginia-based companies, correct? No. In fact, uh, we're at about 20% of our companies are Virginia-based, which I think is pretty good. Um, we're up to about 30 companies now. I say about because we are just we just closed two more challenges where we've added companies. Uh, and we're right in the process of putting out the contract. So uh, these, these numbers are they're, they're about right. But we just, we're just growing in that, in that way. I think something that's interesting is, and I learned of this, obviously I've done Start Norfolk um, and Tim's been a part of Start Peninsula for yeah. I don't know, 10, 10 times now, Tim. I don't even know mm -hmm. how many it's been. Yeah. I did five and, and, and usually it's, hi, I'm a company. Here's a problem, I think. And here's my solution to the thing. And then at some point I learned of this thing, maybe 2014 timeframe where there are big businesses that were having big problems and big business can also be a big city, I would assume. And they were doing this thing called reverse pitch where they would get really smart people in the room and they would say, hey, here's our problem. We'd like to help you in some sort of way. If yeah. you can figure out the solution, now build it. And it sounds that's kind of like what the MIT challenge is in this world where it's like, here, here's this big problem. Why don't you guys fix it? We'll fund it if it, if, if it makes sense. It, it, am I yeah, out of it, bounds there? Yeah. No, it, it's, it's, it actually goes back all the way. The challenges started. Um, with the art, well, one of the earliest, most famous one was the Ortig challenge that Charles Lindbergh won, 25 grand nonstop US to Paris, okay? And there's, there were quite a few people that didn't make it literally, um, but so he won it, he won 25,000. So the idea is you throw the problem out there and that's the sort of challenge idea. MIT was built, helped us with uh, awareness and, and helped us getting it together. But we also, we, our partnership with MIT was to build the, their, their and our resilience challenge piece. So it's, it, this, this model has w worked really well. Also because our local cities are really, really helpful in allowing the companies through us access to their infrastructure and it's uncommon in in other in other places it's done it's done in other cities but the the level because we're a smaller community um we can get access to to the cities and the cities uh, open their doors to us it's really hard for a new company to show up in let's say new york or boston and say i got a really good idea can i get access to your storm drains i, I, rem I remember some of 
just over the years, the number one thing that I think people uh, talk about being as an issue is, oh, I need capital. Oh, I need a teammate, something like that. Actually, I, I think it's access, access mm-hmm. to the thing, right? And I remember when yeah. all of these other programs had started and you got these big businesses associated with it, but I'd come in and be like, hey, I appreciate that you're supporting. But when that company needs your access, are you going to give it to them? Or are you just going to, you know, quote unquote support? Yeah. And honestly, what I found is that a lot of these, uh, these companies weren't willing to give that access. And, and, and it was interesting. I believe, um, uh, the Sony founder, Tim, what's his name? Um, or, you know, it was, um, Gary Warren from Ivy watch. Mm. He said this actually Gary Warren, uh, at, at, uh, I think my last day of the startup community address said, we need more access to this stuff. If if I can go to the Cleveland clinic or the Mayo clinic and they're giving me all this access and I can't get it here. Like that's a problem. I should be able to do that. And so it's great to hear that the cities are opening their, their treasure chest of of access. Cause you know, you want these companies to survive. You want these companies to thrive. And it's like, let it give us access to this thing. It it's huge. And, and it it came from uh, a lesson I learned in my previous aerospace life where um, when we were developing our technologies, we had the opportunity to take it, take them to an airline. And those were guys who um, they, they were flying airplanes and flying passengers. They were operating. They had no time to, uh, uh, to sort of dabble in certain things. So we brought the technologies there and the feedback we got was what took the, technology out of the sort of the R&D sector and made it real. And we identified uh, value propositions that we had never considered before, but that's what made it successful uh, is the operational piece. And that's what we trans- translated. We really pushed hard to translate that to the cities. So we got access to the stormwater department, to the resilience office, to the GIS department. That is so important. That's what makes these things real. What uh, so the companies that you're working with is this uh, pre-COVID? Is this was this a, a virtual type of uh, accelerator program, or did they do the companies come and, and did they do this in person? Uh, how was that yeah. set up? Well, so so let me just address the accelerator piece. So after we've selected the company, um, we provide them obviously with money. And, our, and the monies are, are either in the form of, of a grant or what we what we, we call a revenue-based loan, which means we, we get paid back when the company gets to revenue, mm-hmm. which was another thing I could not get to with my own company before, but I would have killed for it. Sure. So, so or, or some mixture of the two. But we also, if, if the companies needed some help in identifying their uh, minimal viable product or their customers or, or, or the, the, the market or whatever, we, we help them get that. And, and we, we do it through 757 Accelerate or i or Open Seas or, you know, organizations like that. So we broker it out. We don't do that acceleration. And then we, we let the company go. They, they, have to, they have to demonstrate their product in this region. So they, in the past, but pre-COVID, they, they were coming here to set up and run their projects. Um, and even now, now they're starting to do more and more of that now that uh, the, the, the pandemic's uh, uh, changing a little bit. But they have to be here. And, and uh, we, do, we do encourage them strongly to set up a presence here, to hire local companies, local people. And we do as much of that as we possibly can. It's not always realistic for a company to pick up from uh, let's say it's the Seattle to come here for a couple of hundred thousand dollars. We're, we're offering between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars typically. That's not going to get a whole company to get up and relocate. But um, we we offer them space here and we we get them involved with the local community as much as we can. And during the selection process, do they have to have a, an MVP uh, or do they have to have a customer? What's the determining factor uh, for them to be accepted? So uh, what we do is we take their submissions with the work, uh, with the, um, the business plan and their work plan and uh, their technical solution, and it goes in front of a panel of five judges, and we assess them for the strength of their of the team. You know, all, all the standard stuff: mm-hmm. the team, innovation, their their work plan, their their market analysis, and if they need help with the with the market stuff, we can say, okay, we we don't give them one big check. 
Okay, we can say milestone. okay, milestone we'll, we'll, Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. And we we'll, we'll say we can we'll allocate to you two hundred thousand dollars, but the first twenty thousand dollars you have to go through uh, seven five seven accelerates. You have to uh, customer discovery, etc. And when you've done that, and you've done your and you've written up your market analysis and redone your financials based on that, see where you are right now, and then it, you can go on to the next phase. A couple of times we stopped it at phase one. It just has not worked out, and mm. and I see I see that as a success. Sure, know, I, would agree. I would agree of, of the process. When I was doing um, hatch classes cohorts, I I say I wish I don't like to wish anything, but I, had I done things differently, I think I would have done milestone based because yeah. you you yeah. do learn those things. I remember we had written a check to a company that literally every everything on the checklist went through, and it was like this is going to be perfect, and then hit one roadblock, and they were like, I quit, and I'm like. We're out all that cash, yeah. And, and this is uh, bonanzas. Are you stuck at your home office, socially distanced coffee shop, or your fancy all bricked out corner office, wondering why no one can see your business and sales are all over the place? Sounds like you need a pro. That's why I developed the Anomaly Academy. Insert clever copy here. Oh, I guess I was supposed to put something else there. Oops. You can grab access to the Anomaly Academy now at ZachMillerSays.com slash Anomaly Academy.